Hey guys, so today we're gonna do uh, the project about unit testing. So this is actually one of the most useful ones in a real world scenario. When you work in a professional environment, you wanna use all kinds of tests so you don't have problems further down the line when they're in production and clients start complaining about bugs. If you use the approach that they talk about in this unit, you're gonna prevent a lot of issues in your professional career. So pay attention, practice a lot. I think this project and the next one about Battleship are extremely important in your career and looks very good when you're applying for jobs as unit testing is used around industry and it's very val valued by employers. So without further ado, let's get started. I wanna show you guys first how it's gonna look in the end. So we're gonna run this command called npm test. And what it does is we'll go through every single test we have, uh, make sure they pass. And if they don't pass, uh, it's gonna tell us. So let's give an example. Uh, let's say instead of char at zero, I put char uh, one and I run the test again. Uh, did I save? I didn't save. So now let's run again. So it tells that we failed. Uh, so if you guys take a look, so we'll show everything that passed and what it failed. So you see that for empty strings, it still works, but for the other scenarios, it doesn't work. Imagine you're working with other people. It's very hard to know if you're gonna break something if you don't have unit tests. So this is very good because you start creating the habit of writing good code by writing first the tests and then writing your code. This is what is called TDD, test-driven development. Let's now get started. I'm gonna remove everything I have here and start from the beginning. Just to show you guys a bit uh, how this project structure is gonna work, we're gonna start a regular project using Webpack. So if, if you're not familiar, go back to Project, I believe it's Restaurant that introduces Westpack, uh, Webpack in Odin Project. Uh, or you can ask ChatGPT how to start a project using Webpack. I actually use this a lot now, so don't hesitate. This is a great resource for new programmers. This is how our project is going to look like. So after you did the Webpack setup, you're going to have source, you're going to have node modules, but something new is this test folder. So we're going to have a folder where we're going to put all our tests. One thing he talks about is to install Babel, so follow, you can follow uh, this restrictions, which are the same from the Odin project uh, requirements page. And to install Jest, I would also ask ChatGPT, but you have to first install it. Then you're going to put on package.json. So package.json will have a script called test, which uh, has as a value Jest. Jest is a framework for testing code. This is what we're going to use. And when we want to run a script, we say first npm and then the name of the script. So Jest. Uh, let's get started then. So let's start with the first function, which is capitalize. So capitalize is a function that takes a string and returns it with the first character capitalize. Remember that the idea of test-driven development is to first writing the tests and then you're going to write the code. So you want to write your code to fail the cases and slowly build uh, and pass the tests as you improve your function. It might pass all at once. Uh, this might be the case in, in this first test that we start, but it won't always be the case. We're going to use describe. So describe is a way for us to organize our tests. So describe will say what function we're going to uh, test. In our case, it's going to be capitalized. This is all in the Jest documentation. So if you want to learn more how that works, you can take a look. Every single test, we're going to have multiple tests related to capitalize. It's going to be inside of this describe. And now we put the names of each test that we're going to run. So we're going to run a test. Why does it go to test? Test. Uh, so this capitalizes. So the first test we want is to capitalize just a regular string. So capitalize the first character of a string. So how do you write tests? You usually start by writing a test that is the usual scenario, so make sure that works, and then you start going for edge cases. So very common edge cases are if there are no strings, if there is a punctuation, if uh, there is only one character. You want to make sure that, because often codes deals with the most common scenario, but doesn't look into the edge cases, so you want to test all those cases. The name of this test is to check if it capitalizes the first character, and pretty straightforward, we're going to expect. So expect is what we expect the code should return. So we're going to call capitalize. It's not a function that we've implemented yet, but we're going to implement very soon. Hello world. And then we expect it to be, to be hello world after we capitalize it, right? So hello world. So this is our first test. Let's go to the next one. We can copy and paste just to not waste time and just wait. So what is another scenario? Another scenario that we discuss is if there is only uh, one character capitalizes a single character. So then we're going to have, for example, just the letter A, and then we expect it to capitalize. Always a good idea to also test if it's empty. We're going to test empty, an empty string, so works works with empty string. And then we don't capitalize, it just doesn't work, right? Just doesn't do anything. So this is somewhere, depending on how you implement, something that might break your code. And then another scenario is if uh, it's already capitalized, we don't want it to become not capitalized or something weird happens. So already doesn't modify modify already capitalized 
string. Another great thing about unit testing is documenting what you expect the function to do. So this is great if a new programmer, uh, or you hire someone or you want to delegate some work to someone new. If they look at the unit test, they will have very quickly an idea of what you're trying to do, whereas just looking at the code is not always intuitive at once. So your fellow programmers will really appreciate if you start with this practice. So we this, we created the unit test suite for the function for the function capitalize. Observe that when we run the test, it's gonna look kind of pretty. So it's gonna tell the name, whatever you put on describe and then the name of every single test that you're running. So that's why the describe is really important. And now we're gonna actually implement function, the function to capitalize in this index.js. So we will call this uh, capitalize. It takes in a string. Uh, there are multiple ways of doing this, so don't don't follow if you implement it some other way. That's okay. That's not the goal of the of the project to learn how to capitalize. But in JavaScript, there is a very useful function called to uppercase. What we're doing here is to is grabbing the first character, calling the function to uppercase only on that first letter, and then we attach the remaining of the remainder of the string by calling the slice function. So the slice does exactly what it sounds like. It slices the string from index one up to the end. If you don't explicitly uh, provide the second parameter. And now we're gonna export this, so multiple ways of doing this, but let's use modules.export, and we're gonna export capitalize, and we're gonna import it here in the unit test. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna uh, do like a object, I, I don't know if this is called object destructuring, it might be, but this is a way you can import a function, so we're gonna import, it's in my source folder uh, inside of index. So this looks good, let's save it, and now let's see if this works. It shouldn't show the other test because I don't have the other test right now, right? So I'm gonna run npm test, and it should, if everything looks good, it should pass all the tests. I'm gonna show you breaking it. Oh, it didn't, so this is good. It's already working as, an, as expected. So observe here, the tests are running, and we have all the tests that we added, but they're all failing, so let's try to understand. Let's see what they are saying. So str.charat is not a function. All of them are saying that char at is not a function. Let me take a look if I made a mistake, yes. So if all of them complain of the same, it's because a typo might be the, the, the reason why. To be is not a function. So this is another function. This is another issue. So they're all complaining about the to be. Okay, so what was happening is that I need to close here and then keep it here. We capitalize, so the way we were doing, we weren't doing the right way. So we capitalize and then we put the to be. If I just put like this, we are not closing the expected. We need to close the expected, so we expect whatever hello world capitalize is to be hello world. If we have this, we're not closing the expect. So we close here and now things are good. So we need to remove this here. I'm gonna quickly add this here. So good, the unit testing is already helping us to debug. So now everything passes, all the test passes. Again, let's try to make it fail. So let's say I put slice two in here. All of them should fail and they will tell you why. So for example, hello will become H-L-L-O, which makes sense because I'm slicing from the second index onward, cutting the E. If I, yeah, so that's one example. What else? Same with hello world. Uh, it will tell us what was expected and what uh, what went wrong. The first one breaks, uh, so two of them are uh, don't break, right? So the ones with an empty string, nothing will happen because it's gonna still keep uh, returning empty. And single character, same thing, since slice will not will get something outside of the first character, it won't affect. But for something longer or for something that is already capitalized, it's gonna affect. So that way we are always aware, like if a coder comes here and changes something and you're breaking this API, you're breaking this contract that the programmer who originally wrote intended, it's gonna tell us, which is great. It's great. It's something that most programmers don't really wanna do because it takes some time and you wanna ship things as fast as possible, but it is a great investment and over, term, over a long term, it really pays off. So now we're gonna do reverse string. I'm gonna quickly copy and paste this just to save up time and then change everything to reverse string. So reverse string now. And what do we want to test? We will go through the same process. So let's reverse the usual scenario. So reverses, reverses a common string. Nothing fancy. So we can say, for example, if we reverse hello, we want it to be the opposite of hello, which is O L L O E H. If we want a single character, it's gonna be same thing. If it's empty, we want it to keep empty. If we have another, we, we, the capitalization here doesn't really matter, so it doesn't make sense to keep this test, but maybe we have some punctuation, so reverses correctly a string with punctuation. 
you can keep adding as much as you want. Obviously, there is a diminishing returns if you keep on adding. I'd say try to target the main scenarios. And if you deploy this code and something breaks, then you add a new unit test after you fix. So we're going to add hello world. Let's put hello with an exclamation mark. And then if we reverse, it should be O L O L L E H exclamation mark. And if we run the unit tests, it shouldn't work because they should all fail. Let's do that. Make sure that things... So five passed. Let's look at what passed, what didn't pass. Five passed and three fail. So what f uh, it works with empty string, I even find it interesting this works because we're still not calling... Yeah, it's because I'm calling capitalize. So that makes sense. So now we need to implement the function to actually reverse the string. Multiple ways again of doing this. So I'm, I'm using one way of doing this. So str, and one way of doing this is to get the string, split it by individual characters, then you use the function reverse, and then you join everything together. All right, let's now run our tests, make sure that they're not failing. Let's export this. This is a common mistake, so don't forget to export so the other function has access to, the, to this. And let's import it. Oh, here we're exporting, and here we're importing, that's correct. And we're gonna call this in multiple places. So we're going to call this here, here, and here. And now our tests for reversing a string should pass. Again, time consuming, but extremely useful. This is kind of like exercising. Most people don't want to do it because it takes time, but over the long term, it really pays off to keep have this habit. So sometimes this happens. So this is very interesting. Is this a mistake from our code, which wasn't implemented correctly or for, for the test? That often can happen. Not necessarily because the test fails, it's because your code is wrong. You have to analyze and see. Our expected, our received, which fails our test, is actually what we wanted, right? Because the exclamation mark should go at the beginning. The way I implemented my expected, it was at the end, so my test was wrong. So if I put that here, so not necessarily you have to pass all the tests, because if I modify my code to pass this test, my original code would be wrong. We're really doing this to make our lives as a programmer easier, so not to make us make mistakes. Now, this will be an interesting one because we're going to implement the test. Uh, the other ones, all the tests pass at once. This one will be a little bit more interesting because we're going to implement the tests, but they will be slowly, they will pass one by one, which is interesting, which is often what's going to happen when you write your unit tests. Not necessarily they will pass all at once. Those that passed right here were, they passed because they were simple ones. So this is going to be for a calculator. We're going to implement add. So we're going to have a function called calculator.add, calculator.subtract, calculator.multiply.divide. Let's just confirm this is what we want. So we want an uh, object that contains functions for doing those four operations. And they take two numbers and return the correct operation. So here, if I add, I will send two numbers. What do I expect? I expect it to be five, correct? If math is still as it is when I was at school, this would make sense. So subtracting, you can do this and it will be two. Multiply, we can do two times three, six. And finally, and finally divide. If I divide, say, six by three, we're going to expect to, and I also miss here. Now let's implement the, the function. So we're going to implement, it should return an object. So what we're going to do is call this calculator, calculator, and it takes two inputs. Let's start with add. There are multiple ways of doing this. I'm going to, as the key, I'm going to have the name of the function. As the value, I'm going to have the function itself. So this is an arrow function. You can look it up if you're not familiar with this, but this is nothing more than a function. If I, if I, what is this complaining? It is complaining that this is to be expected. I don't know. Calculator. Oh, it's because I'm going to use, yeah, I'm going to use like this instead of, I can do, yeah, I'm going to use, uh, because this is an object, so it makes sense. He wants this to be an object instead of a function. So it's an object. I'm going to create as a var variable and I implemented add. So let me export this and something interesting will happen, which will help us to implement this function. One of the tests, which one, the one for adding will pass, but not the other ones. Why? Because they haven't been implemented yet. Calculator reverses a string. I didn't change the name, so let's change the name. So test addition, test subtraction. Let's run this again so the message is better. It's still complaining because, so at least addition should pass, right? Uh, but why doesn't it pass? Because if you look, he's complaining that we don't have access to the calculator. So we need to import it. And once we import, at least addition should fail. So we should get three failures, which is expected. So divide, 
doesn't is not a function because we haven't implemented same with multiply same with subtraction but addition works let's implement the other ones you got the idea so i'll implement them all at once subtract so we don't spend this is a pretty long it's not a hard project but pretty long so for the sake of of speed i'm gonna implement the other ones and as you expect it should correctly pass the test so this is for subtracting this is for multiplying and this is for division and we should have all the tasks passing so everything passed as expected we have two more functions so now it's starting to get a bit harder so we have a scissor cipher takes a string and shifts a factor and returns it with each character shifted read more about how a scissor blah 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 so what does that mean let's say i have a z z is the last letter of the character if one of the inputs is a shift of one what is the next letter after z if you wrap around, so think about Z, what is the next one after Z? If you're wrapping around the alphabet, it's A again. So we need to, this is probably gonna be a test case, right? Because definitely this is a place with a potential for things breaking. What else? Don't forget, don't forget to test punctuation. So he's already helping us with kind of certain things. You may want to split the final function into smaller functions. So let's do that, right? So let's write our test for Caesar Cypher. So punctuation is something he, he talks about. He talks about wrapping around. So let's copy and paste to save up time. And this is called Caesar Cyber Cipher Caesar Caesar Cipher. Let's think about the scenario. So regular scenario, like I said, uh, it's the scenario that we expect. So nothing too weird here. Just something. So probably we don't want like Z or something really weird that wraps around. Just a regular regular string shifts each character by the shift factor. If you haven't, if you don't understand how the Caesar, uh, Caesar cipher works, definitely read a little bit on Wikipedia. It's not hard. It's just adding an offset on the current letter. So two minutes, you understand. If you haven't understood my explanation, so now we're gonna call the function Caesar cipher, which is an implemented. It will take two parameters: the string. So the string. Let's do hello world and a shift. So we're gonna shift everything by three. What you can do, I'm gonna do this directly to save up time. But you can basically do this like on google would be the fastest way but just by inspection if we add three to e what is what are is the letter so after you we have f g h so e should become h which is the case and convince yourself this is what happens for all of the letters here that i'm writing if you are not convinced you can use google to say hey can you shift all the letters in hello world by three what is expected it will give you this so our function should do this this is the regular scenario the next one is the one which probably can be a place where things break so wraps from z to a so if we have just letter z if we have just letter z and we add one it should go to a caesar cipher it should be a what else let's think a little bit it shouldn't change the cases right they didn't talk in the requirements that if it's uppercase it will become lowercase this might happen depending on your implementation so i think it's good to test keeps the same case so if we have hello world let me copy and paste this and we have uh, h it should the first one should be k so the same thing as the first one but the first one will keep the casing uh, uppercase finally punctuation so they don't want you to uh, according to their requirements if you have an exclamation mark it's going to keep being an exclamation mark it shouldn't affect pun handles punctuation so we can have hello world with exclamation mark and it should keep the exclamation mark sounds good so now let's implement the function for doing that on index.js we're gonna implement caesar cipher this time it doesn't have to be an object so we're gonna do caesar cipher it takes a string and a shift operator and what it does is we're gonna start how can we do this so let's start with the lowercase ones so i'm gonna create an uh, array for char codes it's gonna be an array and I'm gonna loop through the original string. So let i equal zero, i less than str.length. And I'm gonna increment by one. So we're looping through the str and we're gonna grab one letter at a time. So we're gonna use index, the index to grab the zero, first, second character. And then we will check if it matches. So we're gonna check if it is lowercase. We're gonna check, we need to check if things are alphanumeric right because we don't want to modify punctuation one way i'm gonna do this is using regex so this will check if it is a alphanumeric 
There are all, all other ways of doing this. This is just one way using regex. All, all I'm doing is saying, hey, is it between A and Z? And this will include uppercase letters. If it is alphanumeric, first we need to grab the ASCII character. Remember that this is not a, a class about the implementation, so I won't go into details, but remember that every character, A, B, C, D, has an equivalent number, an ASCII character. You can look it up in JavaScript, how there is a function that allows us to grab the ASCII character. So this is the char code at, and we're gonna get the char code at I. So we're getting, for example, if the first letter is A, it's gonna be 65. 65 is the code equivalent to lowercase a. Now this is where things get interesting. So I'm gonna, let me do the first implementation, which is I'm gonna do char codes dot push. I'm gonna push this to the array. So I'll do code minus 65 plus shift. I don't wanna spend too much time here, but since a is 65, so a 65, and I wanna shift, right? So if I shift by three, it will become 68 by three it will become 68. So we can do that. Let's do this right now. And then we'll see why we need to do the negative 65. Let's do this now. And then what we do is we're going to return and we turn this back to from charcoal, charcoals. All this is doing is this is transforming my charcoals array back into a letter. So this will become, I'm appending here, numbers. So it's going to be like 68, 72, 73. This will turn this into letters again so this is going to return a string based on the ascii characters so basically this will be like 68 65 66 all that function th does it turns that back into a string so this is a this is b and this will turn the whole thing into a b we'll see what this returns because of the test so i think it's better to illustrate L now let's run this test to see did i you know i didn't export so we'll fail let me export this and i'm gonna import and now run the test. So far failed. How many tests do we have here? One, two, three, four. But let's see why it failed. So the first one, I think it was very close, right? Shifts each character by shift factor. We expected K-H-O-O-R, so so far so good. Z-R-U-O-G, and there is a space in the middle. So maybe what happened was that we want to skip numbers that are not characters. Otherwise we will let me see what happens, blah, blah, blah. Our, so all the letters are correct for the first one. This is kind of our implementation deals only with that. But we want, in case it's a space, to not, to not add it to our solution. Let me see, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I think our expected solution expects space, but our implementation doesn't add space. So this is interesting. This is where testing is good because it shows us possible things that we might be doing wrong. Let me think a little bit about this. So I thought about this and it makes sense, right? So we have a scenario, an if statement, where we're gonna do the math for the Caesar, if it is alphanumeric, but space is not alphanumeric. So how, what should we do? We should just push it to our array. So we're gonna do char codes, dot push, just the code itself, the ASCII code of space, whatever that is, and push. So now that task should pass. So this is very interesting. It's already, see how unit tasks are already showing us things that we're doing wrong. Let's see if it passed. It seems it didn't pass still but it might be for some other reason. So I think it's because of, what is it complaining about? Code is not defined, char codes, char codes dot push code. So let me push, yeah, so the code is in the scope of this function, let me move up and then it's gonna be in the scope. Let me save this. All right, so a lot of them pass now, right? Just one fail, I wasn't expecting so many to pass as well. So what happened is that it keeps the same case. So if, for example, in our in our test hello world will keep the the uppercase that passes handles the punctuation passes this passes what doesn't pass is the wrapping from z to a this is where now so you see how we're building our we're improving our implementation step by step if i didn't write my test before a lot of these cases might have missed from my implementation i might not have thought about the wrapping so that's why you start with the edge cases it takes longer but over time you're gonna write better quality code so now we need to deal with the the other cases right we need to deal with the we need to deal with the wrapping well how can we do that so if it's z we need to make it back to a a65 if i'm not mistaken so a65 there are 25 letters so 27 26 actually in english so 26 and then 71 81 85 uh no let me see 71 81 yeah so the last letter of the alphabet z will be 81 a will be 65 so we need a way that if it is 81 it wraps back to a 
how can we do that? We need to do some fancy math here. If you don't understand, I recommend watching a video about Caesar Cipher. There's a video that we do on CS50 on the YouTube channel here. We go in much more detail of how it's done. But the overall idea is that we're going to do modules. So the module operator is an operator that is used for calculating the quotient of a division but here it's really helpful because if it reaches a div uh, something if it passes 26 it goes back to zero and then it, it becomes kind of a circle it goes 24 25 26 zero one two three four five all the way to 26 zero so that helps us make this into a circle i'm not sure i won't have time in this video to, i would have to explain and it would take a little bit too much so but on wikipedia you can take a look on how this is done so what we do is we add we subtract 65 we add the shift, we do module, and we do plus 65. Let's see what this does. So what this does is, let's take, for example, Z. Let's take Z, which is an example. 81 mi minus 65 is going to be 26. So we can do the math thing. So Z in ASK is 81. Module 26, this will be 0, plus 65 will be uppercase A. So this is like a fancy math to basically wrap around. I would just Google this, honestly, like don't spend too much time on this. But anyway, this deals with uppercase letters. So this will be to deal with lowercase, uppercase letters. So in ASCII, lower cases go from 65 to 90. And then we're gonna deal, we're gonna do the same, but with lowercase, lowercase letters. So let me just do else if. All this is doing is dealing with uppercase and lowercase and the module makes sure that we wrap around. Again, don't focus too much on this for this problem. This is something that in real life you would Google to, so you don't need to memorize this. ChatGPT would give this. Now let's test, so that should now pass the test for wrapping around, which is what we're trying to test this, and it worked. So we're good, so we have one more problem left, which is the analyze array. So it takes an array of numbers and returns an object with the following properties, average, mean, max, and length. This is similar to the one of the previous ones where we the, the calculator. So we're going to create a, an object. We're going to return an object. But let's think about what we want. We want a regular scenario and then some other scenarios that are a little bit in the edge cases. So let's call this analyze array. So we're going to have a typical scenario where just a bunch of numbers, nothing fancy, calculates average, mean, max and length of array this is going to call be called analyze array and our input will be just a bunch of numbers and then this is so we're going to use now the two equal because now instead of comparing values uh, an array in javascript is an object so when you want you want to uh, compare objects you use the two equal operator to test the quality so this is what we're going to do and the, since this is an object we have curly braces and it's going to be the average of all these numbers you can use the calculator it's going to be four the minimum is one the max will be uh, eight and this is a this is length six this is our first test what else we can also test wait analyze array yeah this is our first test let me grab this copy and paste what else do we want we want to test let's do like a smaller array maybe with some negative value something a little bit different so something with negative numbers with negative numbers which can always be an edge case so we're gonna have minus one zero and one and our average will be zero our mean will be negative one our max will be one our length will be three and finally i think we don't need that many cases here i can see too many edge cases here i think what is this do i still have the other ones yeah let me remove this and then we have one more let's say we have an empty we want our average to be we can define this but in our case it's going to be none the minimum will be infinity this is arbitrary like i'm, I'm basically saying this is what i wanted to return Okay, so let's run this. Everything should fail, so we have we should have three failures. It is complaining probably because I'm missing some curly braces. Caesar, unexpected token, yeah. So I think I need another one of those. I think I need to put this down here. And remove this. Return, so this will return an empty object for an empty array. Let me make sure. This looks good. Yeah, I need to have two of those. This is always tricky when we have a lot of curly braces. Let me have two everywhere. And here it's gonna be two as well, but one more to close everything. So at least this should not give us any kind of error regarding 
the number of curly braces. So three failed, which is good. It means things are working. Now it's time to implement our last function, which is analyze array. We're gonna have a function called analyze array, which takes an argument, an array. Let's start by calculating the sum. This is one implementation. There is a function in uh, JavaScript called reduce. You don't need to use this. There are other ways. This is just one way I'm using. So reduce uses an accumulator. So we add all those values together. What am I missing? Const sum. So I'm going to sum like that. I'm going to take the average like this. So we just take the sum and divide by the number of items. We can take the mean by using the mean function. So this is called the spread operator. We do this to create a copy, if I'm not mistaken, of the original array. This is so we don't uh, interfere with the original array by doing some operation on it. So we do this. We're going to talk more about this in the next section, about pure function. So now the length, really straightforward. And we return those three, four things as a object. So return, we return an object. So average, mean, max, and length. And don't forget to don't forget to export. And then we're gonna import that analyze array here. And run the tests. And we pass everything. This was kind of long. And imagine you're working at a company, your boss is pressuring you to things, you will often skip this step. It, it isn't ideal, but if you wanna deliver something quick, sometimes the market requires it. But eventually you want to go back and write unit tests because eventually things will break. Another developer will come to work on your code, especially as you start adding more developers, more lines of code, things start growing. If you don't do this from the beginning, this is like a Jenga game. If you guys play Jenga, it's like the little blocks of uh, wood. and if you don't write unit tests, it's as if you're offsetting your blocks by a little bit every time you add things. So by the time you are at the top, the whole thing is disorganized. You can't touch it anymore because it's very brittle. It's very easy to for things to break. So making sure you write tests from the beginning will just make your code much more robust and better to modify, to add the developers. It will be more pleasurable because you know that if you touch it, things won't fall apart. So try to implement this in your workflow and your future projects. Hopefully this was useful. I hope you guys join the next one. The next one will be even longer, but will be very interesting because we'll learn about mocking. We'll do a battleship game. So stay tuned for the channel to see a more advanced version of unit testing. So see you guys soon. Are you interested in learning how to code? If so, it's important to know where you're starting from. Taking a prognostic quiz can help you get a sense of your current skill level and give you a starting point for your journey. Check out our free quiz at the description at the end of the video and get your personalized study plan.